Hello guys, so welcome to my channel. Now, right here in this video, we'll be dealing with the cube root of 8. So I make it to be if z or z is equal to the cube root of 8, then z is not just 2. Someone asks you, what is the cube root of 8? 2. Well, very correct. But since we are having square root of 4, there are two values for that. If x is square root of 4, then there are two values for x, positive 2 or negative 2. How about if x, in this case z, is cube root of 8? We're going to have three values for the cube root of 8. That we can substitute for z, and that will be three values, alright? We know two, always, because this is the only real value for that. The other two are something else. Well, let's check them out. Let's find them. So, like I said, z is just cube root of 8. That is to say... Z right there is just cube root of 8. Okay? That simply means that Z cube would become 8. Alright? So we're going to make use of this and we're going to go ahead and solve this. But well, like I said, since 2 is the only cube root of 8 that belongs to the set of real numbers. The others belongs to the set greater than the set of real numbers, which is actually a set of complex numbers. So we're going to solve this as a complex number. And of course, 8 is a complex number where the imaginary part is 0. Okay? So our z cube is just 8 plus 0i. I can write that as z cube, as I've written here, is, zero, is 8 plus 0i. Very fine. Now, for us to get on to put this in a um, polar form, because I want to use the polar form to get the roots we're looking for, I need to get the argument and the modulo. So putting this on a graph, we have 8 on the x-axis and we have 0 on the y-axis. That's just on the 0 plane. Great. So if that is the case, that simply means that we're going to trace this to this point. And that's just it. Like that. Now this angle is just 0 or we have it to be 0 or 2 pi. They share the same boundary, which is 90, 180, 270, 360 or 0. Okay, that is to say sine of this angle is something as sine of 0 is something as sine of 2 pi, cosine of 0 is something as cosine of 2 pi. If you check the graph, you will see. Go for the cosine, and this thing we have it to be this. 0 and 0, we have the sine to be uh, this, this. Okay, very nice like that. So, uh, well, our argument is going to become, the argument of z is going to become, argument of z cube, sorry, by having z cube, is going to become just 2 pi, all right? Or better still, say tangent inverse of 0 is just 0, or 2 pi. Then we say the modulo of z cube is just going to be, um, square root of a square which is x square plus b square which is 0 square now a square and b square comes from the general or the standard form of a complex number which we have it to be a plus ib a is our x axis and b is the y axis so we have it to be a square plus b square that is just square root of 64 is positive 8 we're now we're taking the modulo of that so we're going to take the positive square root of 64 okay like that so for the polar form expression we're going to get the z cube equals to in polar form write the modulo first as a constant product or a scalar product of cosine of the argument which is 2 pi plus i sine of that argument 2 pi great and here i want you to take note Okay, I don't know how to represent this to you for you guys. I'm gonna take I want you to take note of this. Since we are having this to be at zero degree, okay. You know, if you add 360 to that, that's one ton, worth one wavelength, it gets to that again. That's why we actually have two pi. If you add another two pi to that, you have four pi. It's still gonna lie here. You add another one, you have six pi. Okay. You add another one, you have 8 pi. So, 0 
2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, all lie on the same plane, or they lie on the same x positive x axis. That simply means for n, where n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, we're going to have 2n pi. Where n is 0, we have this. Where n is 1, we have 2 pi. Where n is 2, we have 4 pi. 3 and so on. So I can put this as a general form for just 360 degrees or for just this part right here. So I'm going to say 2 pi plus 2n pi. Okay? 2 pi, which is actually the angle, plus 2n pi. Or better still, I just put the 0 plus 2n pi. Alright? And I'm going to choose 0 in this case. Because here, the angle right here is just 0. It shares the same as this, as this, as this. So if I just put here 0 plus 2n pi, that simply means I'm having 2n pi. So our argument now has the general form 2n pi. 2n pi. 2n pi. Where n is an integer starting from 0, you plug it in right here, you're going to get this. It gets to 1. If you plug it in right here, you get this. You get to 2. If you plug 2 right here, you get this. Now, n is not going to exceed 2. Reason being that we are just having to the cube root. Cube root. So when you're having to power 1 over 3 as a power, you're going to respect the denominator of the power, which is just the cube root, which is 3. So the values of n is not going to reach that. So the values of n is just going to be n should be all values in the series. Okay, 0, 1, 2, till you get to the root. In this case, let's just say n root. That's just going to be n minus 1. All right? So that's where we're going to stop. So where n is 3, you're going to stop 3 minus 1. That's just 2 for n right here. So with this, plugging in 0 for n, we're going to evaluate this. We have a particular value, 1. We have So those three different values are going to be the different cube roots of 8. In this case, z. So let's get on with that, right? Great. Now remember that we're having here z cube. Note that we're having a z cube to be x of this. So for us to actually get z, which was the initial thing, we're going to take cube roots on both sides. Cube roots on both sides. So we have cube roots of this, that is just z. Cube roots of z cube is just z equals to, now that is cube root of 8, we know it to be 2, times cosine of 2n pi plus cube root of that. And now we apply a very good, should I say very good, a very standard rule, the Moivre's theorem, which states that these will just be multiplied with the angles. Anyhow, you want to put it. So we have it to be 2 times cosine of 2n pi divided by 3 plus i sine 2n pi divided by 3. If this power was just 3, we just multiply like that. Right? So just 2n pi times 1 over 3, which is just 2n pi over 3 over 3 plus i sine of i sine of 2 2 n pi over 3 like that i think here is enough we can use this to get our three different values for the cube root of z let me just clean all these works okay i think i will not need this again and that's it like that so where n is 0 for n being 0 for n equal to 0 we just plug in 0 here what do we get we get z to become 2 times cosine of no 0 for n we have 0 in the numerator 0 by 3 is just 0 cosine of 0 is just 1 plus sine of 0 by 3 is 0 so sine of 0 is going to be 0 so that's i times 0 is just 0 so we have it to be 1, and that shows us 2. And it was obvious, we already know, that z is not just 2. I hope you know this z 
is gotten from square root of 8. So we are having that z equals to 2 simply means square root of 8 is 2. That's for n equal to 0. For n equal to 1, we go ahead and plug in 1 right here. We're going to have z to become 2 times. Now, for n being 1, 2 pi over 3. 2 pi is just 360 degrees. And divided by 2, we're going to have 120 degrees. And cosine of 120 degrees is the same thing as saying cosine of 180 minus 120 degrees. That's cosine 60 degrees. But you know, 120 lies in the second quadrant. So cosine of that point will be negative. And cosine 60 is the same thing as saying 1 over 2. So cosine of 120 degrees is negative 1 over 2, also negative 0 0.5. Here we're having plus i of, now sine of 2 pi, where n is 1. 2 pi, just 360 divided by 2, is the same thing as 120 degrees. So the angles in each case must be the same. Now sine of 120 degrees, 120 lies in the second quadrant. And sine of that angle is just going to be the same thing as saying sine of 60 degrees, which is just root 3 over 2, like that. So we can go ahead and multiply these two. We have it to be z equals to negative 1 plus i root 3. This is the second root of z, or 8. This. So we have 2, and we have this. For n equal to 2, now, to actually test this, if this is true, what do you need to do? Take cube of both sides. Here, we take cube of this, z cube will become 8. 2 cube is just 8. Forget about the 0, i. it's just like saying 0. And um, if you take z cube here, you expand this, do that, you are going to see that the binomial expansion of all of this is going to give you 8. Very nice. So for n equal to 2, you just plug into right here, we're going to have that z is going to become 2 times, now 2 times 2 is just 4, 4 pi. And 4 pi is something as what? You know, 360 times 2. That is just 720 degrees divided by 3. Is 240 degrees. Cosine of 240 degrees. Well, cosine of an angle in the third quadrant can be gotten from by saying cosine of that angle minus 180 degrees. Alright? And um, since this angle lies in the third quadrant, cosine of an angle in the third quadrant is going to be negative. So 240 minus 120 is 60. And cosine 60 is 1 over 2. But third quadrant we take negative. That's negative 1 over 2. Plus I of now sine of 240 degrees is going to be the same thing as sine of just sine of theta minus 180 where theta lies in the third quadrant. So now it's going to be sine of 240 minus this like sine 60 degrees in the third quadrant should tell us negative already. So just put it there negative and uh, sine 60 is with 3 over 2. So we have our product. Will now become um, 2 times this that is negative 1 minus root 3 we have here to be i that is the third root so this this and this right here the cube of each of them 1 2 3 okay is going to give us 8 8 8 respectively that's it that simply means that 2 is not just we also have this to be and this to be. Where this and this are conjugates of each other. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel.